Today on American Fiddler, I teach you how to actually sharpen a chainsaw. We'll take this and teach you how to make your chain razor sharp. We'll give you some pro tips. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. All right guys, welcome back to the shop. This is American Fiddler. I'm your host, Ezra, and this is where we take everyday man things and we make them look easy because we know piddling ain't easy. Today, we discuss chainsaw sharpening. I'll show you some tools that you'll need, okay? And I'll take the fear out of hand filing. If you're like me, you found yourself to need to know how to sharpen a chain, been hesitant about it, or nobody's actually shown you that. Um, so today we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that with some Black Widow files. I've got these from some friends over at the uh, Chainsaw Shack on Facebook. Uh, Brian Neville, kind of like Cadillac Deville, they tell me is how his last name is, uh, sells these. You can find them on eBay. Uh, I found them to be super sharp and they last a long time. So we'll bring you up to the workbench. We'll work on the old Husqvarna 455 Rancher and show you how to sharpen it. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to uh, want to tighten the chain up. So I have the chain right where it would be if I was cutting, okay? Um, so I'm going to tighten that up and that will take the play out of that. I'll bring you up here to the bench and we'll just do it like we always do. You're going to learn how to properly file a saw uh, and I'll show you what you're looking for and uh, what to avoid to help with that. Stay tuned guys, I'm super excited. All right guys, right here on most of your bars, you'll find the information you're gonna need, okay? Uh, the Husqvarna 455 Rancher has a 3 8 inch chain, okay? And it's a .050. So this type of chain is going to require a 7 30 seconds file, okay? Um, and this is a little bit fatter file and it, it fits right in here. Okay, uh, just like that. So, you want to make sure that you've got the right file for the chain. Um, again, the first thing I do is tighten this up. So, with the uh, make sure it's pretty easy. You loosen your nuts here. So, you loosen those up just a little bit. And then I kind of lift up on the saw and tighten this down. And that'll have that super tight. I'll go ahead and snug these back up just for this purpose, okay? We're still going to want to be able to, to move the chain. So that's going to be pretty tight, but it'll hold it steady for us, okay? So this is a .325 chain. This is a brand new chain, full chisel chain. Uh, and you'll see that little hook right here, okay? That's, we're trying to recreate that hook. See that little cat hook? Almost like a cat claw there. And then you can see uh, going the other way, that's the way the file lays in there. But that's what we're trying to recreate, okay? This one is a uh, .325 chain. It requires a 3 16 chisel to the 7 32nd. And it's, that's those side by side. You can see it's just a touch smaller, touch smaller chain, right? The last one you're gonna need is for the like 3 8 Pico chain. It's what I have on my little climber saw. Um, this is another Black Widow file, and it's a 532nd file. Okay, these are going to be your three most common types of files. So, a 3 8 uh, standard chain is going to be 7 seconds. A 325 chain is going to be a 3 16 file, and a 3 8 Pico chain is going to be a 532nd. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and use the proper one. For the rancher I've got this snugged up here we are okay you'll see on this side get a little pointer here on this chain right here it's got a little hook see that hook that's what we're gonna recreate okay when you're hand filing you'll see that on the top of the chain it's got this laser etched line you can see it right there okay that's gonna be the angle now what I do to have this angle is I bought this little itty bitty piece of plastic, okay? See how it says 30 degrees? On this side it says 25 degrees, okay? This is like five bucks on Amazon, I'll leave the link below, but it has really changed the way I hand file. This is probably my handiest tool ever. So it goes right here, 
And if you can see, okay, it lines up, this line lines up with the angle of this tooth. So, once they're lined up, I will take my file in here. What you'll see is that this line right here lines up with the angle of the tooth. If you look on top of the tooth, it has a laser etched line. Name of the game here, okay? You're gonna take and lay this in, and you're gonna get on the right angle, okay? But it's not a right angle, but it's the right angle. So you can see that, then you just, okay? Come back out of it. Some people count these. I, uh, I don't. I just kind of go until I can feel that the the file isn't digging in as hard. Because uh, at that point, it's sharp. So when I'm doing this, I'm pushing in. So I'm pushing this way. And I'm also kind of lifting up and file on that right angle. So I'll hold just the perfect angle and do that. Okay? Now... So this is our tooth that we just sharpened, okay? And you'll see, when you look at that, and you'll see, okay? When you look at this, when I was filing, I was filing into this and up into that, okay? And when you do that, it creates that hook we were talking about. Okay, you see that hook? Where it looks like a cat's claw? It creates that hook. And you do that by filing back in and also up to there. Right? And you're gonna do that for every tooth. So, when I first start, if this is the power head, you're gonna file away from the power head. You're gonna file that way, okay? You're gonna do that, when we lay that file in there, okay, you're going to want to be looking down the saw this way, okay? This is our tooth. I don't wanna be this, I don't wanna be like this, and I don't wanna be like this. I want to be like this, 90 degrees, okay? 90 degrees, and it's not so this one, you can see how I could go this way or I could go this way but I want to be 90 degrees. So I want to make a perfect right angle. And I will mark this tooth. Okay. So that tooth's done. Then I work my way back. So I'll file this one, this one, this one, this one. So tip number one is your angle. Okay. You get your angle right by some form of a guide. Okay. So once you file all of them this way, I take and put my saw in a vise, okay? That way I can pull it around, right? So see how it's clear down here? Doesn't, doesn't catch, okay? And my chain is super tight because if it was loose, it would roll on me. And you don't want that because that will allow it to come out. So. Number two, buy yourself a good file and don't be afraid to replace your files, okay? These things don't last forever. Tip one, angle. Angle is everything in this, okay? Even if I was sharpening a pocket knife, I would take and I would hold the knife at the angle to the sharpening stone, so I would have the angle this way, or I would use a sharpening kit that would hold the knife on an angle, okay? We're doing the same thing that has a cutting edge on it. And you're putting that edge at the proper angle, okay? Uh, somebody way smarter than us figured this out a long time ago, what angle it needed to be at, okay? So, tip number one. Pro tip one is gonna tell you to put it at the right angle. Whether you do that with a guide like this, okay? Or you do it with a little cheat sheet guide like this. I love this little thing. It's like, it, it is really inexpensive. I will leave a link below. It's under 10 bucks, okay? Tip number two is the proper file. So we've went over file sizes, right? For the 3 8 
uh, 0.050 chain, I'm going to use a 732nd file. I'm going to use a sharp file. I like these Black Widow files. You can go find them again, like I said, on eBay. Uh, and you're, this is a wear item. This doesn't last forever, so you're going to need to replace this. I put my files in a uh, file handle, okay? Um, but you can do what you want. Now, tip number three. If you keep your files from hitting the floor, that would help too. Tip number three is going to be your raker depth. You need to file your rakers, but you need to do it properly. Okay, this isn't freehand. You don't just guess at it. Um, if you file them too low, your saw will be jumpy. If you don't get them even, it won't cut as smooth. So the name of the game is we want a fast cut in the saw. Uh, we want it to cut straight and uh, we want it to cut good. If you're in big, um, soft wood, you can take and make your rakers a little aggressive so you can file them a little further down. I typically, around our part of the world, I put my rakers to 25 thousandths, maybe 30 thousandths, uh, just depends on the day. Uh, you do that with some form of raker gauge, okay? And I have multiple. This is the Husqvarna little quick file. Uh, it, it's got three eighths. This, this holds you on the right angle too, and I can show you that up there on the saw. This one uh, is 25 thousandths. So this one's 25, right? Um, this one's going to be 30. See the point three oh right there? I'll take you up here and show you how to set your rakers. What the raker does, okay? Also known as a depth gauge. I'm gonna call it a raker every time. Okay, but this is the raker. This is your cutting tooth. Remember that little cat hook we talked about? Okay, if you've noticed, the very top of this is higher than this, right? Well, this rides on the wood, and this is how much it cuts. So you remember the part where we were talking about up in there, that how the top of the cat hook was important? That's because that's where it's doing most of the cutting, okay? So we're going to take our little gauge, and we're going to set the depth of this. You can clearly see that. You can see that this is lower than the top of this. And that's what we're talking about, setting it at 25 thousandths or um, 30 thousandths or 35, you know, if you're in softwood, 40. Um, when you look at your depth gauge, you see that it's got hard and soft. Now this one is a little different. It goes up against the back of this one and then it lays there. Okay. And that one is just a touch high. Hard to see, but you see how that's just a touch high? Okay. That's the part we're going to take off. Now, again, you can do it that way. This gauge that I showed you before, it actually just lays on the chain like this, and you file it down. Um, same thing with this one. It lays over it, and you file it down, and these aren't actually too bad at all. Okay, you can see how it's just a touch high there. You see that? Okay, but if you actually get it on there right, it's not. So. Now, same thing there. I use a Black Widow flat file to do those. This tooth, okay, we filed it away from the saw so it was going in this direction, out back towards there, okay. And so you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna put your gauge on and file it down, okay. See how that's just a touch high there? Okay, and that's the part you're gonna file down. Okay, it's pretty smooth. I'm gonna take one last little hit like this and flatten it out. Take the burr off the edge, just like that. And now, it doesn't hit when you come across like this. Okay. See how nice and flat the top of the raker is here? Okay, you can see our little cat hook, how clean it looks there, right? So it looks absolutely beautiful. So you've got your raker nice and set. 
right here. Okay, we've got our angle gauge on there. We'll take the proper size file. We'll hold it at the right angle. You'll take it in here. That right there, that is how you actually sharpen a chainsaw, okay? That is freaking sticky sharp, like, like scary sharp, right? So let me show you what it looks like completed. You'll run through this way. You'll turn the saw around and run through the other way. It's really that simple, guys. This is how to actually sharpen a chainsaw, right? Once the tooth is complete, you'll see. Okay, we got right here, we got this nice and sharp, we got the top leading tooth sharp, and we've got our depth gauge set. That simple. Three easy tips. Your angle, the proper file, and what I consider the most important is this right here, the raker, the depth gauge, at the right um, right height. That simple. Hey, if you guys like uh, piddling around here in the shop, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, leave me a comment down below, and let's talk about it. Tell me what I'm doing right, tell me what I'm doing wrong. As always, I love it. I've got uh, Made in the USA sponsors. I've got uh, Log Ox, okay? It's a forestry tool, pretty awesome. They've sent me one. Stay tuned, we'll watch a video of that. I've got the saw haul, I've got some projects for that as well. So we're going to take the log ox, the saw haul. Uh, we're going to uh, go out in the woods. We're going to try and do some vlog style stuff. Stay tuned for that. Uh, I've also continually got my plug phones, right? I love plug phones. You guys know that. Uh, Salem Master have sent us some chainsaws. Uh, we're going to do some stuff with them as well. Okay, guys, that wraps it up. Three pro tips. Get the right angle, the right file, and get your raker set. And you're going to have a sharp chainsaw. That is how you actually sharpen a chainsaw. I can't uh, can't thank you enough. I'm fired up. Stay tuned for more episodes. We've got plenty of more chainsaw stuff. Uh, I've got a project with a little old truck to work on. Um, we're going to try and do some more vlog style stuff. Again, I can't do any of this without you. We need as much positivity as we can get in today's time. So uh, let's keep it positive in the comments. If you've enjoyed today's show where we've taken everyday man stuff we've made it look easy because we know piddling ain't easy make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment down below and tell us all about it i can't thank you enough for stopping by the channel i've got to say god bless you thanks for watching and keep on piddling